So in this video, I will be asking a series of questions about the male reproductive system to help students figure out what they already know versus what they still need to work on. So to help orient you, I want you to identify what is this structure, this, and this. So this is the rectum, the bladder, and this is the urethra. Now because the male urethra is longer, it breaks down into three subregions. What are they and what structures are they inside? This region is the prostatic urethra because it's in the prostate. This region here is the membranous urethra and it is in the urogenital diaphragm. Urogenital diaphragm because it is a wall of muscle that is supporting urinary structures and reproductive genital structures. And then the last region is the penile urethra or you can call it the spongy urethra because it's in the penis and specifically this tissue in the penis is the corpus spongiosum. So this tissue is corpus spongiosum. This is the corpus cavernosum. So we said this wall of muscle was the urogenital diaphragm, but in that there's kind of a circular muscle here that is closing off the urethra. What is that? That is the external urethral sphincter because closing off the opening of the bladder would be the internal urethral sphincter. Remember, a sphincter is always a circular muscle that is closing and opening. So this tube here, we said was the prostatic urethra. What is this tube here? That is the common ejaculatory duct, and we'll come back to that later. What is this region, this region, and this region? So this is the bulb of the penis, this is the shaft, and this is the glands. What is this, this, and this pale pink tube? and what are the functions of those things. So this is the testy where the sperm are produced. This is the epididymis. That is where the sperm mature. So when they're produced, they're not able to swim. Um, it takes about 20 days for them to mature into swimming sperm. And they kind of take a slow journey around the epididymis while they're doing that and then the mature sperm are stored in the epididymis until ejaculation. This tube is the vas deferens, also known as the ductus deferens. So during ejaculation, the sperm moves from the epididymis into the vas deferens, and that's how it's able to get out of the body. What do we call this bundle of nerves and blood vessels? And what do we call the tunnel by which it passes out of the body? So this is the spermatic cord. The tunnel by which it passes out of the body is the inguinal canal. So on this side of the model, we took off a layer. 
this is a muscular layer above that. So what is that? And then what do we call the skin? So this is the cremaster muscle. The skin covering all of that is called the scrotum. The job of the cremaster muscle is to elevate the testes when they are too cold because the sperm need to be at a specific temperature for optimal development. They need to be a little bit below body temperature, which is why your testes are outside of your body. But when things get too cold, the cremaster muscle contracts to pull them closer to the body. So we said this tube here was the ductus deferens or vas deferens. That tube travels up through the inguinal canal and wraps around to come here. So what organ is this and what is that? So this is the bladder, this is the prostate gland. So the vas deferens has a wide portion. That is the ampulla, and it is right over top of this gland. So that gland is the seminal vesicle, also known as the seminal gland. So what are the job of the seminal gland and prostate gland? So the epididymis only has sperm. There's not really any fluid associated with that. The fluid volume is coming from the seminal gland and the prostate gland. So about two thirds of the fluid volume of semen will be coming from the seminal gland the other one-third will be coming from the prostate. The vas deferens and seminal gland meet up and they form a tube and that tube will be the common ejaculatory duct. The common ejaculatory duct meets up with the prostatic urethra. Okay. So there's a third gland we have not mentioned, which is this. So that third gland is the bulbo-urethral gland, bulbo-urethral, because it's near the bulb of the penis, and it dumps into the urethra. What is the job of the bulbo-urethral gland? The bulbo-urethral gland does not contribute to the semen volume. So because males also have to use their reproductive tract for urination, um, that urine is acidic, which could be harmful to the sperm. So the job of the bulbourethral gland is to produce a neutralizing fluid called pre-ejaculate and that is going to neutralize the urethra in preparation for ejaculation. All right, so that's all I have to say about that. I hope it was helpful. Have a great day and have fun learning.